Hello. So yesterday we covered the temptation of Jesus and tomorrow is gonna to be the first episode we talk about the Sermon on the Mount. Today we're gonna to talk about everything in between those two events. As a result, today's episode might just be a little shorter than the other ones. That's not to say that these scriptures aren't as important as the other ones, but maybe there's less to draw from. All right, let's read Matthew chapter five. No, no, that's the wrong chapter. That's the wrong chapter. That's the wrong chapter. Matthew chapter 4, verse 12. Now when he heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Nephtali, so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. The land of Zebulun and the land of Nephtali the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light, and those dwelling in the region and the shadow of death on them, a light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So what we're seeing here is actually really important. It's the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Uh, John essentially passes the torch to Jesus so Jesus can preach the same message that John has been preaching all along. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So this raises an actually really important question. What is the kingdom of heaven? Jesus talks about it all the time. Like seriously, he won't shut up about it. So what does it mean? What's the message? To understand what the kingdom of heaven is, I think the first question is, what is a kingdom? What do you need to have a kingdom? You need a king or a queen, and then you need subjects, which are just people who recognize the authority of that ruler. King of the who? The Britons. Who the Britons? Well, we all are. We are all Britons, and I am your king. I didn't know we had a king. I thought we were an autonomous collective. So as you've probably gathered, God would be the king, and we are the subjects. All throughout Jesus' ministry, he talks about this. It's really important that you're part of this kingdom because just like any other kingdom, it's not stagnant. There's warfare, there's times when it's booming, there's times when it's shrinking. There are people who try to rise up against it and we are all called to be a part of that kingdom to some capacity. I don't know how to become a part of that kingdom. I don't know what I'm supposed to do in that. In, in, I can speak words. If that's you, that's quite all right. Jesus says in John chapter three, the wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. I honestly get a sense when I read the scripture that Jesus didn't even 100% know where this is all going. Jesus is like, oh, time to go into the wilderness now. Oh, time to eat food. The spirit leads people on what they're supposed to do right now. That isn't to say that God can never give you a plan of the future, but that's just not usually how that works. If you want to be a part of the advancement of the kingdom of heaven, pray a lot about it and ask God what is your part. You do have a part to play. There is a place for you. It's just a matter of asking God what that place is. So now that we understand what the kingdom of heaven is, it's time to look at the other part of the message. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What is repentance? It's turning away from sin. Just because the kingdom of heaven is coming, why does that mean that you need to re repent from your sin? Well, if you want to be a part of the kingdom of heaven, it's pretty clear that you can't be addicted to sin. The Bible says elsewhere that you can't have two masters. So this message is still very relevant today. We know that there's a promise that comes with being a part of the kingdom of heaven, and that is heaven itself. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Meaning that those who have accepted Jesus' message don't have to go to hell, but they can spend heaven in eternity with God. Jesus is walking around basically saying, repent, there's this really important thing coming. It's right here, it's at hand. All you have to do is repent and you can be a part of it. Jesus understands the magnitude of how important this is, but it's time to read on. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother casting nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called to them. Immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. And he went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom 
in healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, seizures, and paralytics, and he healed them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis. Galilee and the Decapolis. I don't know how to say that. The Decapolis. And from Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. So here we have Jesus calling his first disciples. It's worth mentioning that this is not Peter and Andrew's first encounter with Jesus, but I don't really have time to talk about that here. If you want to study that yourself, here's your reference. So while I prepare these studies, I listen and I read pastors and teachers and draw from it. And one thing that I heard while I was listening to these, which I thought was really wise that I never thought about before, was the way that Jesus called the disciples. Notice that he says, I'll make you fishers of men. He didn't say, I'm going to make you patriarchs of this great new religion. And from now to the end of time, people are going to look at you as for how they should live their lives. I think that would be kind of overwhelming. Remember, these people aren't Pharisees. They're not the people who know the scriptures like the back of the hand. They're just fishermen. And so Jesus calls them into something that they already know and are comfortable with. You know how you catch fish? Well, now you're gonna catch people. And I don't think that they knew what that meant, but Jesus did not immediately pounce him with something that's super overwhelming. In the same way, if you're watching this and you're feeling like, I don't know, I might be called to serve God in some capacity. I don't think he's gonna pounce on you and say, well, it's time to go to Africa. You're gonna travel to some tribe that you've never heard of before, who speaks in a completely different language and preach the gospel to them. How about never? Does never sound good? You'll probably start off with something smaller, something you're a little more comfortable with. That isn't to say that God's never going to take you out of your comfort zone, because I promise you, he will. But it's usually about adding on to something that you're already comfortable with, rather than just throwing you in a, in a situation that makes you completely overwhelmed. God understands the needs of his people. And there are some cases where people feel completely overwhelmed by the ministry they've been called to do. In those cases, God gives them the strength they need to fulfill their calling. As we're wrapping up today's video, I want to encourage everyone who's listening to take 15 minutes and pray. Here are some prayer requests to get you started. First, I want you to think about the word repentance. That is, turning away from sin. Pray and ask God if there's anything that you've not repented from yet. This is a prayer that God will answer. If there's something in your life that you need to turn away from, now is the time to get right with God. The second prayer request I have for you, if you've repented of your sin and you know that you're saved, ask God how you can serve Him. Like I said before, there is a place for you in the kingdom of heaven. God has some sort of ministry or opportunity to share with a friend, whatever it might be. There is something for you to do. You're not just going to suddenly magically be a missionary. You have to go to God and you have to ask Him, Lord, what do you want me to do? And if you're constantly trying to serve God and get closer to Him, I promise you, your relationship with Him will be a lot better as time goes on. Well, that's all for today. Pray for me, friends. And as always, if you're watching this, I've already prayed for you.